Hello and welcome back to Crooked Lantern. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to work on a 1965 Volkswagen bus uh, rear brake assembly. This is a big nut transmission. Um, so this is kind of like the uh, later style brake setup. Um, the early, early style is a little bit different. I'm not sure kind of where they cut off on the differentiations. Uh, it's not even going to work between <laughs> all the brake systems. Uh, but we're gonna just go over this one today. Uh, it's gonna be pretty similar to most of the drum systems that you're gonna have on a Volkswagen bus of this year range. So, first things to start, um, I've installed a new backing plate. Um, so, there's gonna be two nuts that go here to secure the backing plate to the reduction gear box right here is a hole for a screw to go through um, the brake master cylinder which I have a new one of and that mounts up right here like so and that secures it that way so I'm gonna go ahead and start by assembling those um, one of the things I like to do is take these off um, just to make sure that these are aligned when I install it and then I'll show you a little trick with these later when we install the pads So uh, first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and just start with this lower one You can leave that in or take it out But that's where your hard line goes into and then of course you have your bleeder valve and they send it with a little cap on there So let's go ahead and install this and This is going to be a 13 millimeter hex head This is a brand new screw, came with a wavy washer. That wavy washer is kind of like the, uh, a version of a lock washer. Old Volkswagens will generally have wavy washers. So I'm just gonna tighten that until that wavy washer is about flat. There is a torque spec, I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, but as long as, as it's tight enough, but not too tight, Guten tight is about right. Um, so once that's on, we'll go ahead and put these nuts on. I will save you the anguish, but there's not much room on this specific backing plate to install the nuts um, underneath this block here. So I'll go ahead and spare you that, and I will fast forward to when this is already installed. All right, so I've got these tightened down. You may not have to do that unless you're installing new backing plates, which is nice, but keep in mind if you do that, you're gonna have to replace the gaskets um, between this. You may as well um, you know, put a new seal in here and that kind of thing. Uh, we're not gonna go over that because these are already installed. There are videos out there though that go over that process, um, or there are some forum reads that are really good as far as the proper way to do that. Now, uh, like I said, it's kind of tight. If you're, trying to, if you're trying to put a socket in here, you're not going to be able to fit it between this block and those, and I guess that depends on the backing plate. But you can use a standard crest wrench, put it on there, use something like pliers or channel locks even, and you get that leverage, and you can kind of help that rotate you around so that you're not running into things on the way. So just a little trick um, if you are doing that portion. So now once you have these tightened down, this tightened down, um, you can kind of spin these pistons around as needed. Um, just kind of make sure they're gonna be vertical because um, that's how the uh, pad's gonna slip in there. Uh, now speaking of pads and backing plate, uh, one thing that a lot of people don't know, don't realize, maybe um, have it done is that when you put the uh, pins through these holes right here to retain your pads against the backing plate um, They're going to contact it. Um, you can see right here. There's little uh, raises in the backing plate and it's common and normal to have a little bit of ride so what you do is take a very little amount of grease and just You don't want to use too much because you don't you know dirt will get attracted to that grease and it'll stick to it but just on those little raised portions 
where your pad is probably going to contact. You don't want that added drag. And just kind of grease it just a little bit, just a touch, just enough um, to keep it moving. Good. Sliding along there. And that's part of the design, but a lot of people don't do that part, don't know that part. I have good friends that educate me on things, and I do that now. Um, it's also a good thing to have uh, maybe an assembled picture handy so that when you get close or you start assembling it and you're like, oh wait, especially with the rear brakes because you got the e-brake to put together, that you can kind of uh, reference it to make sure you're putting everything in the right place. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install our star and screw. This is what is used to adjust your pads. Um, screw this in all the way when you install it. Now I'm going to go ahead and anti-seize it. So keep a shop towel on hand again for this part because anti-seize gets everywhere. Um, do not install this without doing anti-seize. You are going to kick yourself if ever you adjust, well, you will be adjusting your brakes if you drive your bus at all or, you know, your Volkswagen with this style brake. Um, go ahead and put that anti-seize all over the star. Um, oh, sorry, when I say all over, I mean all over the star in the place that it will be inside of that hole. Uh, you don't need to put it on these little wings. Um, it wouldn't hurt necessarily, but your screwdriver might slip off of it a little bit when you're adjusting later down the line. Really just need it on that portion there. You can put a little bit on the threads. Threads here. And when you screw it in, you don't want this to get stuck because you will be unable to adjust your brakes and you're going to have a bad day. So, And that is that. So I'm going to screw that in all the way. You pop it in. Now these little tabs on top, those are meant to be there so that when you're going, they go down and they kind of almost click when your star goes into place. Now, this particular backing plate, I'm not stoked on the design of these tabs. So I kind of bent them down a little bit. Um, the other side was kind of the same way. Um, but essentially when you adjust this, it's going to spin, you know, when, when the pad is holding this in place and this spins, it's going to unscrew it or screw it in basically. And so, um, that's kind of just how that works. Um, now again, I'm not stoked on this particular backing plate design, but here we are. Um, I think these were actually, you know, German made ones, or at least advertised as such. Um, so I was hoping for a little bit better design there, but this is what we got. This is what we're working with. It'll work. Uh, maybe down the line when I, you know, go to put a different transmission in, I'll probably swap these backing plates out for a uh, different style. Maybe I might try the Brazilian ones and see how those go, um, but I'm not stoked on this design right here just seems like they didn't really take into consideration a lot of things. So again, with the anti-seize, we don't want these to get stuck. Go ahead and thread this guy in. It's not a big deal if you get some, it's got, the anti-seize is going to get everywhere. Just accept it. You can kind of pop whatever extra in there. And try to get it off your hands. So, we'll go ahead and install that. Great, so those are in. Um, and then you're gonna wanna kinda set these to where they're vertical like this, cause that's how your pad's gonna sit in with those edges. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna get our pads ready. So, what I'll do is I'll show you what we got going on with the pads. You don't need a ton of tools to do this. Um, you could really get away with uh, a pretty basic tool set. The main thing is you're going to need is something to tighten that rear nut with. This is just the MP, I don't know, modified wrench thing. But we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, so when you get your uh, spring kit, they're going to send a ton of springs that you won't actually use. Um, they send all these springs because 
um, different. It just kind of encompasses a lot of years. It's cheaper for them to package it all just kind of in one than it is to sort out all of these springs and sell them specifically for each model. So when you get this spring set, just keep in mind that some of it you're going to be like, uh, I don't think I need all this. So this bit large spring is going to be the one that sits on the bottom. Now, if you look at it a couple different ways, the hook portion of the spring is going to be out towards you. And if you turn it one way, the bar that connects them is going to be lower. And if you turn it again, 180 degrees, it's going to be higher. Uh, you're going to want it in the higher position. This is more important in the front than it is in the rear, but it's still important to do it that way. Um, that's how it's intended to be. Uh, now you're going to have a small spring that you can install later that's going to go on the top and um, that kind of can go either way. It's really kind of straight across. Um, so we'll go ahead and get these set up and then I will hold them up to show you how it's going to be aligned. All right, so I'm going to start by showing you kind of just half of this. Um, when you get this spring set up here, um, essentially you're going to want it like this and you kind of swivel it in and you hook it like that and that's going to sit like this. Now the kind of like smaller portion, that's what goes into your piston. Um, the fatter, wider portion is what goes into your um, screw. Um, the one thing to note also is, well, you have a rear e-brake. So what you're going to have is you're going to have a lever like this and you're going to have a pivot pin and you're going to have a uh, looks like a little horseshoe. Now this is going to go on the lower portion of your left pad. Now they're not the pads aren't necessarily uh, designated to which side that they go on necessarily um, but just kind of pick one and then just go from there. Uh, and like all things there's always going to be something that throws you through a loop. For some reason this pin is not fitting through this. Such as mechanics and Volkswagens. Um, have to drill this out so that this pin fits through and for some reason so I bought this all from Wolfsburg West normally have pretty good luck with all the parts working um, the issue that I'm having at the moment is, is that this pin is not fitting through this particular arm it's a close fit but not a perfect fit so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go drill this out so that the pin fits through. Uh, what we'll be doing is placing the pin through the bottom portion of this pad, like so, and um, slipping this arm over. And then we will secure it with this horseshoe on top and you'll basically have your right side set up and ready to go. So I'll be back momentarily after I take care of that. Alright so what I did was take a few thou out of this hole right here and now we're perfectly good in there. Um, I don't know why they sent it like that but uh, whatever. So I'm gonna take a little bit of grease, just a tiny bit of grease, and I'm just gonna put it on that pivot pin. Um, what that's going to do is prevent that from seizing up at any point. Let's say maybe you go a short period without driving your bus. You don't want that to rust up. Um, so that little bit of grease is going to keep this moving smoothly on there. Um, we don't want uh, this to add any resistance to your e-brake system. Be careful when you're working with these pads. Uh, you don't want to get grease on the actual pad portion. Uh, you want the grease to remain uh, exclusive to only the tiny bits that you're working on. And really you don't want to contaminate the pad surface at all. Um, it's just kind of uh, bad. Um, so, um, just kind of slide that horseshoe on. You can use some pliers or small hammer. That will do it. So, uh, what we have is we have our 
a little arm secure on here so that moves like such now um, obviously the spring's not in there right now and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the other part of your e-brake which is this little bar so what ends up happening is you have the kind of how it's cut in a, in a way that allows it to sit on there and also sit in that groove so it sits like that um, when we have it all hooked up it'll look a little cleaner but essentially that's what it's going to look like um, it keeps this from rubbing on your pad um, and that's what your cable is going to hook onto the top here um, so I'm going to go ahead and get all this kind of just assembled and I'll just kind of talk to you as I'm struggling through it and uh, we'll just kind of work it out not everything goes smoothly, but that is just the nature of working on Volkswagens. Um, as long as we know what our goal is at the end of it, um, we can work towards it. So, I'm only going to place the bottom spring on right now. Um, the other thing I'm going to do that I learned after ruining several of these is instead of leaving it on here, I'm going to put it on the pad. So what I'm going to do is slide it on and push it up past probably where it's going to actually be and that will keep me from destroying it when I'm trying to you know pry it with the spring and set everything up uh, what ends up happening is you just you, you slide it all over that little rubber boot and you, you essentially destroy it and this way you can kind of pull it back and check to make sure that your pad is seated in there and it just is, it's, it's a much smoother process. So, it's kind of tricky um, to get the spring and try not to touch the pad too much and get the leverage without it coming out at you like that. Um, it can be done, but have some patience and take your time. Don't get frustrated. Watch your fingers, watch your face. There we go. So, we've got this. I can pull this back and I'm gonna, oh, perfect. It's right in there now. Pop it right over, good to go. Didn't damage the rubber at all. Again, over here, pull it back. And we are in. Perfect. Now, pop that rubber, see a nice little snap. Good to go. Perfect. So, uh, we've got these installed. We can go ahead and just slide that over just to keep it out of my way. Um, that's gonna kind of sit back, or sorry, that's gonna sit right there. Um, that's what allows it to kind of track away from this. Now, our springs here are gonna be, this is probably gonna be in my way when I go to do my spring, so I'm actually gonna leave it here for now until I get that spring in. Now, as far as this upper spring, um, as far as my reference photo shows, and as far as I can remember from doing the other side, it doesn't really matter that much which way you go. Now, there is two different style hooks on either end, and I'm just not sure which one belongs on which but due to the fact that there's a spring right here and the holes right here I'm gonna go ahead and put the short hook over here uh, one thing to keep in mind um, there's several holes on these pads and again it's that same concept we discussed earlier when you get your spring set there's gonna be more springs in there than you need and even if you look at this right here we've got uh, you know, you could you could use it on either side. It doesn't matter. Um, I almost forgot about this part. And before I throw that other spring in, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I can get this in here. Um, and let's see. What I... There we go. So now we're set there with that little bar. Let's go ahead and try this again. So we've got. Those kind of going right into the place. That bar is actually helping out a little bit. Now, let's go ahead. Set that one. That's in.
Okay, so we're set on the top. And let's check. All right, it looks like we are in on this piston. Good to go. All right, let's try this again. This side is not set, I can tell you that right now. So, pull this back. Pull that back. Okay. There it goes. And that now might be a good time before you get too far along. Check your reference photo. Make sure that your um, you're not installing anything incorrectly at this point. So I want to make sure that. So now we've got that bar in place. Okay, that's looking, that's looking about right. So now, <laughs> now that we've got this in place, you got your spring up here, your bar here, your bolts tightened here, these are secure, That uh, the boots are secure, your little horseshoe guys on there, it's good to go, putting this in place. Now let's go ahead and uh, install that upper spring. And the thing about this is, is there's a thousand ways to skin a cat, so they say. Although I like cats for the record. And we could do this, this probably a dozen different ways, and there might be somebody that disagrees with me in the comments. Um, but for me, this works. It worked. Um, this is not the first bus that I've worked on, not the first pair of brakes I've installed. And sometimes it's just kind of the nature of how things so go. So go ahead and check your reference photo and just look. Okay, we've got these springs installed. The hooks are facing out. There's nothing really contact. We don't want anything rubbing in here when everything's moving around. Um, we've got this bar. It's normal to have a little loose because there's no tension on it yet via this. Make sure that this moves freely inside of this area. Okay, we've got our spring here. We've got these seated here vertically. We've got room to adjust. Um, make sure that your rubber boots are on your piston. Okay, okay, okay. All right, now let's go ahead and install our pins that are gonna hold these back. Um, and probably spray things off with some brake clean and go from there. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, uh, when you get your spring set, uh, I mentioned earlier, there will be springs and parts that you will not need. There are different lengths of these little guys in that pack, almost certainly. Make sure you use the right ones. Um, I don't have measuring tape nearby. I can measure them. I'll put it in the remarks down below uh, or in a little pop-up thing right here at what the actual measurement is for these. Um, that way you know you're using the right ones. Uh, these are marked with a T. I don't know if that has any significance, but what I do know is that there's a hole in the backing plate, and these come through a hole in your pad, like so, and that's what either side is gonna you're gonna start with right there. Then from there, you're gonna have springs that look like this, and you're gonna have little cups that look like this. Now they make a tool. Um, that makes it a lot easier to install these. I don't have it. So I'm going to use pliers. So your spring will be seated on this little guy in no particular orientation. And that's going to press down. And your little thing right here, your pin, is going to be flat now. I'll show you off of it. So it goes through your, through your back and plate, through your pad through your spring, then it goes into this little cup. You spin the cup and there's little grooves for it to sit in. Now those grooves are what will give you uh, that tension that won't come off so it's not gonna pop off and it's gonna keep your 
your the tension is going to keep this all in place. So when you when you put it through, you're going to want to press down, spin your cup, let it let the tension back out, and it's going to press it into that groove, and then you know you've got it good to go. So I'll go ahead and do that. It can be kind of tricky, but essentially. And, and the tool does make it easier. I mean, you can get a little brake tool kit at Harbor Freight for next to nothing. So if you're going to do this and you don't have the tools, you might as well go and get that. And you might want to wear eye protection on this part if you don't have it. And you've never done this before because um, there, you're definitely working with spring tension. And, you know, if you like your eyeballs... That's a thing. So I've got that in there. Give it a little, little twist check. Make sure that it's in that groove. And that's good. My plate, my pad does not want to come off the plate. You can, you can go pull it and it's 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 where it wants to be. So again, on this side, same thing. Now, this is why I never bothered to buy that toolkit because I've never really had an issue installing in this way, but it can be kind of tricky for some folks. So just keep that in mind um, when you go to do this job that there is a tool that does make it easier. And we're gonna press left-handed. Oh no. Press firmly. Oh. Just make sure you're not putting your face too much in there. Give it a little twist test. Press test. That's good. It's not going away. So, we're going to go ahead and hose her off. You really can spray this on all of it. It's just probably good form, especially in your pads and then just let it dry in grease. Any foreign stuff's gonna kinda just die down. Probably not gonna knock too much off those backing plates that we put on there earlier. So, we're gonna let that dry down. Now we're gonna do a check. We've got our e-brake. Now, one thing I wanna mention, if you're installing a backing plate in your e-brake, put anti-seize right there. So, when you take this out one day, you'll think yourself. In your Bowden tube over there, do the same thing. Um, so we've got our big spring on the bottom, little spring on the top. E brake goes to this little kind of portion there to retain it. It's on there. Horseshoe, lower pad through the hole. Retainers, okay, everything. Do your like final check because once you put this drum on, you really don't want to take it back off. So do your one last check. I've done these several times before and I still check because I don't want to have to take these back off if I don't have to. Now one other thing to keep in mind is that through all of this your pistons can kind of get a little wonky and your your pads might push out a little far to one side or then the other and <clears throat> when you're putting your drum on it might contact a pad over here or over here and so you can kind of smack them around and you can look at where you're sitting and go okay i want that to be up a little bit that to be down now these ones there's no really adjusting that you can do mostly it has to do with this portion you can slide them up make sure they're nice and even okay and then your pistons will move like this so it could push it cockeye out this way cockeye out that way and then your drum is essentially kind of what keeps it all in place so um, just kind of be aware of that when you're pressing on your drum don't slam it past because you could chip off some of your material here, which is what you need to stop. So just keep in mind 
uh, that part when you're when you're going and just kind of check your gap um, around. So uh, what we have is a Brazilian uh, repop drum. Now uh, it is pretty clean out of the box here, but just to be sure, I'm gonna go ahead and spray some brake clean in it. Just kind of wipe it out. Now, uh, whether you have a German repop or Brazilian repop, one of the issues that a lot of people have had is that uh, the way that they manufacture these uh, inner splines um, is really, really, really tight on these splines. And if you give it a quick Google search, you will find on the Samba and other Volkswagen forums that this is an issue. Now. Uh, the last thing you want to do is modify this, but what you would want to do if it's necessary is modify this. Now let's go ahead and test fit and see where we're at. You can already feel that this might give me a little bit of resistance here. Let's go ahead and try the front. Let's see how we're... Oh man, yeah, that's gonna be tight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a file to the drum. And I'm just gonna start very little down each channel and I'm just gonna try to take off any burrs, anything left from the machining process that could be interfering with this fit. This is common. Uh, don't feel like you are doing something that is not uh, known. This is a known issue with rear drums on buses. I don't know why. This could take you a little while. You don't want to go ham sandwich with your file, but you do want to just kind of take a file and just slowly go through these channels. Maybe take off any burrs, anything that happened from the machining process that preventing it from sliding smoothly onto your bus. All right, so I've gone ahead and taken off some material on the inside of the drum splines. Now I wanna be clear, I didn't go crazy with the file taking off a ton of material. What I did was mostly just run the file down each channel, take off any burrs, any, any deficiencies in the process of making the drum that is making it difficult to fit onto the spline. Uh, there are pictures online of certain drums that were extremely tight to fit. Um, and eventually that stress cracked and it cracked the drum along this area. Now, that's the last thing we want to happen while we're driving um, because you will lose your wheel and you're gonna have a really bad day. Um, so we wanna kinda just loosen up those tolerances. Now, I have heard of this happening with both Brazilian drums and German drums. So it's kind of a crapshoot. I don't know why the manufacturing process is like this on these drums. Both sides of my uh, uh, bus with these particular drums that um, I did buy for the correct year, correct model, correct spindle size, were just a bit tight. Um, so what I did, like I said, is just run that file through each channel and just lightly take off any burrs, just a little bit of material um, so that this fit isn't so tight that it causes stress and under heat. Now the last thing you wanna do is try to heat the drum, put it on or chill this and, and put the heat the drum and put, press it on because what's gonna happen is when everything returns to normal temperature, you're gonna have that expansion and that retraction and it's gonna be all bad and something's gonna crack and it's gonna create a, a big issue and I'm, I'm fairly certain that this is some sort of hardened steel. So the last thing you want to do is heat it up. So don't start thinking heat is your friend in this instance. You really want a good dry room temp fit. You want everything to be the same temperature here. So I'm probably going to have to use a mallet to get it seated all the way. But um, I did make that fit a little bit looser. Now I'm going to take a little bit of grease on my finger and I'm just going to kind of slide it over these splines. And, um, it looks a little heavy. I'm just going to take it down. I don't want too much, but you definitely want some on there. It's going to help with sliding this on. Good. 
and you can take a little bit, put a little bit in your drum. It's going to help uh, keeping these from seizing together, and it's also going to help with the process of installing it. So, got a little bit of grease installed. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get this aligned here and get it pressed on, and we're going to kind of start going forward with this. Now, what you're going, especially if you have to use a mallet, which in my case I will have to, in your case you might have to, you might not have to, keep in mind as you're going down that you're not contacting those pads. So we're on that spline. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to slowly hit this on with the mallet on this face until it is on far enough for me to get the nut on and I'm screw it down the rest of the way. Now at any point it feels like it's dangerously tight, I would back it off. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward us and we're going to get to the point where I'm just putting that nut on. So as you can see my drum is not fully installed and I'll explain why. As I was installing this particular drum I noticed something quite alarming. Uh, it may be difficult to tell from your angle here in the camera, but I measured that where the bore comes through from the inside of that spline to the outside, we're at 11.3 millimeters. And on completely 180 degrees away from that, we're at 9.6. 9.8, 8.6. This was not reamed out in the center. It was reamed out offset. That is extremely concerning to me. So I will not be running this drum. I will be contacting C, uh, CIP1, I believe it was I ordered it from, and I'm going to get a replacement. Just so you are aware, this is the brand. It's a Guadalate, I don't know, original, made in Brazil, MDS. Uh, maybe stay away. The other one is not like this. I just, for a sanity check, I went over the other side and I measured, and it's not like this. So, a bit concerning. I'm not going to complete installing this drum, but just so you know what I was doing, essentially I was taking my mallet, striking the center, and then kind of working my way down. Now, had this been good, had this been center, had I not had any concerns, we would have got it pressed all the way down and we would have been able to begin threading our axle nut on. We would have threaded it on all the way and installed the wheel, then did our final torque. Don't ever forget your time. final torque on these is about 240 foot-pounds. You can do that using a breaker bar. Um, there's all sorts of methods on how to do that. Don't ever forget to torque this down. Um, but we will not be doing that today because uh, these Brazilian drums have let me down and that is extremely concerning. I mean, that's that's a huge difference. I mean, I was, I was hit with a hammer and I thought, whoa, that don't look right. Um, I'm glad I noticed that can make this whole drum off-center out of balance, you throw a wheel on, you've got this wobble back here, you can't figure out what it what, what it is, and that can do it right there. So that will conclude the video for the day, but the main bulk of what we did is we accomplished installing that. The drum, assuming you may be using the old ones, should just fly right on, no issue. If you're installing new drums, new manufactured drums can be a bit of a doozy, so please, please look for things like this look for the details there's a lot of companies out there cranking out old bus parts because there's money in it people are restoring these buses so pay attention to that when you're working on these buses i hope that this has been helpful at least in this end of things uh, if you have any questions comments just hit me up below click the subscribe button please and i will uh, start to deviate a little bit from the lanterns do a little bit of automotive things uh, as I continue to uh, restore my 1965 bus here. Um, anyway, I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.